Bradshaw Public Affairs. Berkowitz is my name, and politics is our game. Well, actually, today we're going to be doing not so much politics and public policy, but dance, the world of dance. But there'll be politics there too, so some politics. We'll see if we can work it in. Because our regular viewers, they come here expecting politics, and you're going to see how dance relates to politics. So don't you don't you turn that dial? Is if you do, if you do, you're going to miss a really, 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 really good show because we have as our guest Janice Schneider. She is the interim artistic director of the Foster Dance Studios in Evanston. And Jenna, so you have been there now for several months as the interim artistic director. Correct. Okay. So you're 26, right? I'm 26, yes. So do you ever, ever have that kind of thing? Because you dance as well. Mm -hmm. And you dance with Copa Deca. Correct. Professional company that's with the FOSS. Not with, but sort of affiliate. It's a little bit of association. Related. Association. Yes. <laughs> Foster Dance Studios. So when you're dancing, okay, so people think of this when you watch a football game, when you're playing football, if you ever have. And it's fourth and goal, and there's like five seconds left, and you're down by five points, and you need a touchdown. You call the play, you're at the line, you've got the, you know where the hole's going to be. You're the quarterback, you go back, and you just sneak it over, it should be easy, and the hole is not there. Yeah. So does that happen in dance? You're dancing. There's supposed to be, it's all choreographed. Ron Stewart did this masterfully, right? Yeah. Your mentor. Absolutely. Ron Stewart. Okay. He got it all. It's all set. You're the dancer, but something's amiss. So what do you do? What do you do? Well, it's like one of those situations in many ways that you, just like you would in football, as a dancer, you're very trained to understand your piece. You're trained to think very fast. You know your choreography inside out. So in many ways, like football, you would, sur you would survey the entire field. In a dance way, you would think about, okay, what's coming up next? What's happening right now? Where do I need to be? Is there a lift that I need to be in right away? And then you assess based on what you need to do, and then you make an improvisational choice. So, for example, I was uh, at one point doing a duet with one of my really good friends who did Coco with me, and she, we, we somehow got really oddly into this position that was not normal. But I had to, a second later, I had to be there to be able to catch her because she had this big jump lift onto me. And so I had to really think very fast and I had to make an improvisational choice that was completely different from the choreography to be able to get out of the odd position that we were in, to be able to get me to a spot that I could safely catch her and make, quote unquote, the actual play. And so you take everything you've learned, everything you feel, every emotion, every music, everything that's ever entered your body, mm -hmm. and you draw on that, and because you started this, what, 21 years ago, you're in Skokie, you're dancing, yeah. you're five years old, you're dancing for your parents. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I was just like literally in my parents, you know, in my parents' house, I would put on this one tape, had La Bamba on it, Richie Downs, loved it, right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I put it in every single day, and I would just listen to it over and over again, and I couldn't stop dancing. So we say this because we expect a broad audience for this show. We expect we'll have some three-year-olds out there, some five-year-olds, some 10, 15, 19, 20, the whole spectrum, and adults, and you want to give especially the younger kids because the Foster Dance Studios has what, several hundred or more students yeah. in that whole range, starting with the youngest, going through high school and up to adults, professional dancers that are around there as well. Right. We're talking to everybody. And you're talking to the parents. Yeah. What is it that these, um, <clears throat> well, if you're talking to a five-year-old, what would you tell him or her? And I say him or her because when in dance, females outnumber males, don't they? They sadly do, yes. I mean, great for all, for all the, for all for the all female the involvement, but I would love to get that male involvement 
as well. It's important to have both. Yes. Okay, so we got boys and girls out there. What do you tell those young kids? What is the essence? Is it like dictate and follow, just do as I tell you? Or just dictate and follow me? So there's a sense in the dance world that was very, very common, and it's still very common, but it's a sense of like, let me give you my choreography, let me give you, this is exactly what you need to do to be a professional dancer, or to be a ballerina, or to be a contemporary dancer. Um, and you do exactly what I say, and that'll make you into this cookie cutter perfect dancer. Um, but what we found at Foster Dance, which is where I'm the interim artistic director, is that we love to be able to give kids their own voice and the importance of having the strong technical skills. So having your strong ballet, jazz, modern, but also being able to develop that voice through techniques such as improvisation. We have our own improvisation form called moped. Um, and then we also do, when we work with them choreographically, we work in a way that allows kids all ages, whether you're five, whether you're 18, pre-professional, but to be able to not only own your own voice, but also to be able to develop it and be able to understand what works and what doesn't for you. So you've got to, well, when you started, when you started and you were five and six and seven, were the studios you were going to, were they doing what you just said, or was it more, here's what you do, boys and girls, you just follow what we say and you'll be good? Oh, it was very dictate follow. I mean, right. That's, oh, that yeah. was the mode at that time. Oh, yeah. Almost any, anywhere you'd go in Skokie, maybe anywhere you'd go around the country. Yeah, it was absolutely around the country. I mean, I went to an extremely strong ballet school, and we weren't even allowed to talk. You had to wear your black leotard, pink tights, you had, um, it was everything was very stripped. And, and there definitely was a sense of like you learned musicality. It wasn't like there wasn't an involvement with the actual students. But there's a difference between saying, this is, you need to have your turn up this way. You need to have these type of arches. You need, your airbus needs to be this high. And that is not the way it is now. If you're five, six, seven or older and you come to the foster dance studios, you don't have what you just said. You might wear something other than the black leotards. Yeah, I mean, you're still going to have your traditional ballet classes. So yeah. ballet is going to be a little bit more traditional just because there's and that's no stores. Yeah. Who is, who is your star at Foster Dance Studio? So, yeah, so our ballet teacher, who's extraordinary, she's our head of the ballet faculty, the woman named Grasa Salas. So, she was the actual former ballet master of the Joffrey Ballet. Um, and actually the principal, so all the head dancers, the, the principal's head coach. She's absolutely extraordinary and we've been very lucky to have her for the past few years. So she runs our ballet program. So they do get that very strong bearing of technical skills. And discipline. And discipline. But there is a sense too, like I said, what we're seeing right now in the professional dance scene. So what we're seeing in like Batsheba, Israel, Netherlands Dance Theater, even Hubbard Street Dance Chicago, which is the very um, top contemporary company, is that choreographers are no longer looking for, again, this cookie cutter dancer. They're not looking for this dancer who just followed all of these set recipes. What they're, they're looking not, for, they're no, not. what they're looking for is a dancer who can collaborate because in the end, if they're just to do their own choreography and say, do exactly what I say, it'll just be kind of boring. It'll start to look exactly the same over and over again. But on the other hand, if they work collaboratively alongside each individual dancer, well now you're cooking, now you have something that's really unique and that's also just fit to that dancer, so that dancer can be their best self on stage as well. So how did that, how did that make its way to the Foster Dance Studios? Because back in 2011, you were at TCU, right? Yes. You were studying dance, mm -hmm. theory, practice. What was the TCU school called? So, so I got a BFA from the School of Classical and Contemporary Dance in Modern Dance Performance. And, and, see you could have, give people an idea, a lot of people, you had done a lot of dance already at that point, you had yeah. the opportunity to go to a conservatory. Right. What is the difference between a place like TCU and a conservatory? So I mean nowadays it's Back in the day, it was very, you go to the conservatories, but 
as time has progressed and money has progressed within the arts, especially for collegiate programs, you're really seeing a ton of um, phenomenal different uh, major schools bringing in dance programs. Now, TCU actually was the first ballet department in all of the South of um, America. Really? So that was, yeah. So, like so they've been on for a very long time, yes. Um, but yeah, so there's, I would say there's not much of a difference, especially if you're going to an extremely high leveled um, university. But there, was something, but there was something else that attracted you there because there was something at TCU you could get. Well, what you, you couldn't get at ex- surgery. What you always get, what you also get is that academic side. Um, so why is well that as why? So you're somebody out there, they're like 15 or 16, they've danced. You remember when you were performing? Yeah. It was like the best thing in the world, right? Yeah. You're like, it's so high as you're performing. Like, you're saying, why do I need that academic stuff? Yeah. What does that add to you? Well, I mean, in the end, what's the truth of being a dancer like any other athlete is that your career has an expiration date. And alongside just obviously the obvious of that, what are you going to do after your performance career is over? There is a sense too of your body has to last. Your body has, especially nowadays in the contemporary world, a lot of major companies want you when you have experience post-college. So you're looking at 25, 27. Um, And your body has to be able to make it through, which is not always the most common. People get injuries and that's just part of the dance. So why do they get injuries often? Um, it can be a variant of things. I mean, as a dancer, as you're being pushed at a very young age and extremely hard weight, but also going back to that dictate follow method, um, not all different recipes, not all technical ideas fit every body. And that becomes a very important so some things are reason why we don't like the dictate follow method. Some things are anatomically appropriate if you're 16. There may be things that are not anatomically appropriate for you then that might be at 21. Well, and even like even going deeper into that as human beings, we're all asymmetrical right. beings. Yeah. And so just because one person naturally gets their knees right over their actual toes when they plie, there's actually a small percentage of the population that has more turnout than and when they bend their knees, their, their knees actually go in a little bit. And for the longest time, that was considered wrong in ballet. But nowadays, what we found, again, for a good chunk of the population whose knees go naturally over their actual toes, if you kind of put your knees in front of your toes, that is going to be bad. But there is also a small set of the population that has within their bone structure the ability to find that extra turnout and that it becomes actually bad for them to force their knees over their actual toes and they're forced to force their bones in a position that they were not meant to be in. So again, this idea of here is what you need to be doing to be a professional dancer, here is exactly what you need to do for your body, really becomes not only does it limit the creativity of the dancer, but it alongside can lead to some major, major injury. Okay, so in 2011 and 2010, you're at TCU. Right? Yes. What's going on at the Foster Dance Studios? What is there in 2011? If you, like, we say Foster, this is the street. If you're in Evanston, you'd know the Purple Line starts at Howard, goes north to the Lindenell and the Met, or it is the Lindenell, Purple Line, Lindenell. There's a Foster stop in between the Dick stop in Evanston and in between and um, the Noise stop, which is also in Evanston. There's the Foster stop. So, you know, if you get off at the Foster Stomp in Evanston and you go about 200 feet west, what do you got? Where are you? You're at the Foster Dance Studios, yeah. right? Yeah. Right next to that little pizza shop, okay? Yeah, absolutely. So, but at 2011, there really was just a building there, right? There yeah. There were no studios, right? No, there wasn't any studios. It was a. Uh... I think it was once an old uh, college book warehouse. Or was it like in a, a video store or whatever? So something it was something like that. And uh, so people got together and they were entrepreneuring. Yeah. Now, who were those people? So our founders were um, a man named Ron Stewart. So he was our artistic director, founder. Um, Sarah Goldstone, his wife. Um, and then we have Sally Turner, who are, was our original executive director, and then Catherine Ebert, who is now our executive director of Foster. So those four people had this idea 
that this building could be built out and you could have studios. So you've got now three studios. That's why they say yeah. the house Yeah. That first floor has three studios. Correct. And so they started with what, 20, 40 people. Yeah. They had exactly. concepts of teaching, performing. They had maybe somebody had Coco Deco in their mind. Mm -hmm. Maybe Ron had them. Ron had been where in Santa Fe before? So yeah, he had been at this point, he'd been in Santa Fe, so he had um, a studio and conjoined with a company called Moving People Dance for about 10 years out in Santa Fe. What was so unique about Moving People Dance? What was so unique about Ron? Well, I think Moving People Dance, he, while a lot of what he brought to Foster, he developed at Moving People Dance. Ron always had this energy and this want to bring anatomical dance and again bring dancers this voice, especially once he got um, exposed to the new Gaga, which is an Israeli um, improvisational form. He was really inspired by that to again think about ways that he can do improv to allow dancers to have more of a voice. So in, in Santa Fe, he really brought this extremely strong technical sense along with that artsy, creative, allowing kids to have their own voice, which in many ways is actually rooted in the Santa Fe culture already, but what was not so rooted was more traditional, classical dance, like ballet and modern and contemporary. So that's what he really and brought there. And jazz. And jazz, yeah. And hip-hop. And hip-hop, yes. All, that, and all those forms come together. Yeah, what we consider the concert dance forms. So, Ron knew that. Sarah knew that. Yeah. They may have married them, but was his wife to be? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And in any case, Sarah was a dancer. Sarah was a dancer. She and a choreographer. Yeah, and a choreographer. She actually attended Juilliard. Okay, so she brings some of that classical influence. Yes. But also the interpretive that you're talking about. So Ron and Sarah bringing that as the artistic directors originally of Coco Deco and uh, Foster Dance Studios. Mm -hmm. And Sally's bringing some of the business side to put this together, as is Catherine, yeah. Edward, who's an MBA, and former banker, and so forth. But but actually, Catherine, see, where do you learn this stuff? Where do you think Catherine learned dance? Because she knew some dance then. Right? Yeah, well, How she, did she, learn? she was kind of lucky because she had two amazing children who loved to dance. Daughters. Daughters, exactly. So, parents out there, <laughs> if you come to Foster Dance Studios with your children, boys and girls, not only will they learn, you will learn through them. Yeah. And you will get a feel, a feel that you get so much almost every day. You dance almost every day, don't you? <laughs> I dance seven days a week, yes. Seven days a week. <laughs> so you don't want to, you need that high. Yeah. You need that high every day. Yeah. Okay. So they would get that, but parents get a sense, maybe a little bit of that same eye through their kids. Yeah, right? oh absolutely. There's something, I mean, my parents, they have come to every single dance concert that they can because there's something about, and this is what you experience as a dancer, but they've actually scientifically proven it's, you can actually watch dance and experience this too, but there's something of being able to express yourself with your physicality and get to the point of exhaustion, but also express through emotion, express through stories, express through art. And this marrying in the middle of this full-blown physicality alongside this intense creativity and this plugging into your soul and your art. And that, what is that right in, right in the middle, that kind of married point? You, you find there's this unexplainable sensation that you experience as a dancer and then as also an audience member that you experience while watching dance as well. That's super unique to the art form. So in a sense here, this show is about an entrepreneurial spirit. So let me get to politics because politicians should know this. <laughs> they should know, you ever heard the phrase, a political entrepreneur. See, we have dance entrepreneurs here. Mm -hmm. We have political entrepreneurs because entrepreneurs, they, what do entrepreneurs do? What's one word? Entrepreneurs create. Create? That's yeah. It. And what do you do as a dancer? I create. <laughs> as a choreographer. Exactly. Choreographer. And, and as a dancer. Okay. Yeah. But to do this before you could do that, somebody had to create the studio, they had to create the building, they had to create the idea that there would be classes there, so there's teaching going on, there's performing, 
And a lot of that was Sally and Catherine, and then Sally left, so then it was Catherine, and working with the artistic directors, Sarah Goldstone and, and Ron Stewart. Yeah. And, 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 and Ron brought so much of this that you've been talking about, because he was, in a sense, your mentor. Yeah, he saying? definitely was one of my mentors. You came there in 2013. You had mentors when you were at TCU. It Correct. influenced you in the same way. Yes. He would then influence you as you were starting to, well, you were a student, and then you were a teacher, and you were learning all of this time. Yeah. And you were learning from Sarah, you were learning from Ron, you are actually learning someone from Catherine. Yeah. So she created this with those folks. Those three created this building, the studios, and... And then it sort of grew from there. Yeah, it, it took off. <laughs> you could say so it's yeah, so yeah, several <laughs> students. So you have all sorts of classes going on. You have the Foster Davis Studios company. Yeah, we have our so we have a few different companies. Excuse me, Foster, so Foster, Foster Dance Studios, <laughs> Foster Dance Studios company. So you yeah. have a few companies. We do. What are those companies? So we have five main. What we call our studio companies. So they're kind of our main companies. Um, that are divided up both by age, a little bit level. Um, so we have five, we kind of put them in colors. Oh, okay. So we have our pinks, we have oranges, blues, purples, and then we have reds. Um, and so what we do is we, uh, they're kind of required to take a certain number of classes for their technical skills and developing their voice, but then we rehearse with them twice a week and we do a big show at the end of each semester. So you've got one coming up, we're taping this on December 21st. You will have a show in the second week of January. Yes. This week you can't say too much <laughs> about it, but you can go. You should know you can go Absolutely. usually <laughs> to chicagonow.com slash public affairs where you'll find politics. But from time to time, I will be writing on there about dance because sadly, we haven't mentioned this, that Ron Stewart passed away on September 30th at the young age of 42. Yeah. And when that happened, there was a memorial service, and if you go to chicagonow.com slash public affairs, you'll find stuff about that service, a tribute to Ron Stewart. You'll find coming up, if you go in January, discussion of their show, Together Unite. Together Unite. Except Together Unite. <laughs> I got it right, correct. Thank you for the correct. Absolutely. Together Unite. Yeah, sure, you so know. Close. Together Unite. Uh, so, and, and in that show, you bring together all of what you're talking about. Yeah. You have <clears throat> performances by those five colors, which you say? Yes, our five colors. Five companies. Yes, five companies, as well as a few other companies Perfect. as like well. Intermediate, what are those So two? we have also another two companies called Intermediate Pre-Pro, or Pre-Professional, and Advanced Pre-Professional. And so those are kind of our, you know, like 13 and up kids that really kind of think, you know, I might want to be a professional dancer. So it's that step even, okay, let's push even further. And then we also have a really phenomenal classical ballet program um, that's run again by Graza. Um, and then we also have some hip hop crews. We have a junior crew and we have an advanced crew. And so working with you when Ron passed away at the end of September, you became sometime after that the interim artistic director yes. at Foster Dance Studios. David Maurice came in. Yeah, we had a, a few different faculty David. that came in. So, a bunch of faculty. Yeah, so one of the things that we wanted to do was really, after Ron's passing, was to surround our studio with love and a diversity of light, is what I would say. A diversity of light of different teachers and backgrounds and, and just to bring this kind of loving atmosphere um, just through a bunch of different specialties and again as many people as we could to bring in to bring in that love So uh, one of the big faculty members that we brought on was David Maurice um, David Maurice is actually a former 8-9 dancer, which is a major dance company out in um, LA They do a very Batsheba -e Israeli type of dance form um, he also was a member of Luna Negra out in Chicago when he was here, and I danced with Coco Deco for a long time, and he's now the interim artistic director of Coco Deco. So he kind of came on, and uh, he's kind of doing a few different classes as well as some of our choreography. We have a few other amazing faculty as well, like Braden Barnes. Braden Barnes is also a former member of Coco Deco Dance Chicago. 
and he uh, is now dancing with Visceral uh, Dance Chicago, and he also has his own choreography company called Great Barnes Choreography. He's phenomenal for Nevada ballet dancer as well. He came on. And then we have a few other people like Katie Carey, um, who's actually a former faculty member uh, at Foster Dance and was a founding member of the, of, of the Nomi Company in Chicago and is now a member of Coco Deco as well. Um, and then she also has this incredible multimedia improvisation company called Chris Modus, which they do really unique kind of episodes of almost dance film based. And she's totally innovating and coming through the dance world and kind of bringing this dance film, improvisation, multimedia side of things to the Chicago dance community. So this is all this is all growth that's happening yeah. in just the last few months. Huge growth. And Ron saw this. Ron because he had these five principles and one was do it with love, right? Yes. And that wasn't he had these principles. These are the principles at Foster Dance Studios and some would say broader. There's sort of schools of thought and dance. They're life lessons. Yes, and there are others outside of the Foster Dance yeah. Studios who believe in those five. Yeah. What does it do it with love? What does that mean? When you dance, do you do it with love? Oh, 100%. <laughs> At oh, least to the best of my ability, yes. Yes. Is it kindness? What, is, what does it do with love? What does that mean? You know, do it with love, I think, is each to their own. It's, it's an individual interpretation, but there is a sense for me personally, doing it with love is like going out teaching, choreography, performing, and just giving it my all and, and owning who I am as a dancer and to not compare myself to anyone else, not to compare myself as a teacher, to understand and just be powerful within your own self, but also to embrace those around you and to be respectful and to love them as well. And to remember why you're there. That's yeah, so there's, so there's actually a few rules. There's keep going, rule number one is, 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 is to keep going, so it's a sense of never stop, always push forward. And then our rule number two is to listen. So we talk about for within dance, listening to your own body, but also listening to teachers, listening to friends. I mean, there's always a sense of, we all need to listen a little bit more in life in general. And then there's suspend judgment. This is a very important one. To suspend judgment, obviously, of your own self. So you can be, again, that best dancer you can be. But Real quick, because we got in judgment. Time's going on. Uh, others. What, did you remember all five? And then there's remember and do it with love as okay. well. So, <laughs> folks, folks, I just want to remind you, we got Watch Your Dance Studios has that show coming up. You can find out about it and find out about it by going to chicagonow.com slash public affairs. And, and also, you know, we're taping this on December 21st, so you'll want to keep that in mind for the second week in January. you want to keep in mind the enrollment that's going on at the Foster Dance Studios right. in the first week in January. you want to keep in mind the summer program, which we didn't have the time to talk about. Super exciting summer plan, so. There you go. And so, <laughs> And so just keep that all in mind. And you politicians, whether you're Rauner, whether you're his challenger, Jeannie, Jeannie Ives, whether you're Prisker, whether you're Kennedy, Chris Kennedy, whether you're uh, Daniel, Dan, Dan, Daniel Biss, there we go, Daniel. <laughs> so all five, Republican, Democrat, we don't, you just remember one thing, all of you, you just remember, you remember this. You come back next week and every week to public affairs and do it, do it, do it, do it.